Welcome everybody to the Lasting Hope Podcast. This is Josh in the cave with James. James, welcome back. It's been a while since you and yes. I have done. It's been a while since I've done anything, but it's been a while since it's you and I have us. done yeah. something. So, last time uh, I was in here was Easter with. It yeah. was actually Good Friday. I was in here with Isaac and Elijah, and then Elijah yeah. had to run, and then uh, we did the Easter episode. Me and Isaac did. So, welcome to the world of being videotaped for the first time so i finally figured all this stuff out um took you long enough it took me a while to figure (laughs) this out i'm not very very techy and uh, finally figured out that i can just record the video and take the audio off of the video but since i'm still a little special when it comes to technology i still use the lapels through the other computer as a backup for audio just in case. Yeah. So we're recording here on two sep two separate entities. So one way or another, we're going to get this stuff done. So uh, thanks, guys, for listening once again. I know it's yeah. been a while and we've been a little sporadic, but just a lot of lot of life going on. Yeah, um, a lot of life. How's how's your life? How's things been for you? I know you got a car issue. Yeah, car issues. Um, trying to find a house, house shopping. That's that's an experience all in itself because it's the first time I've ever like been house shopping. So going through that process is uh, is an experience in itself. There's questions that I'm like, oh, this is something you got to ask. Oh, okay, I didn't I didn't think about that. So. Uh, but it's fun. It's a good process. Uh, planning a wedding. That's, that's, that's a lot. That's uh, a, a big process of, you know, finding everybody that you want to invite, finding a venue. All right, now we got to find all the, you know, the cups and mugs and plates and, um, all right, now we got to list everything on our registry. So let's, you know, spend hours on end trying to find the things that yep. we can tell people, give us this. Um, <laughs> I remember those days only I was much, much, much less involved than I am. Yeah. Than you are. I'm way more involved. I'm there. Are, there are times when like, I'm just not in the mood and, um, and she's just driving it. Um, but sometimes it's like. She's just not in the mood to like really do anything. And I'm just like, all right, what are we going to do next? Like, what's the next thing we're going to do? And so it's, it's back and forth. You get stressed, a lot of stress involved, which is actually why we're talking about stress is there's, you know, life is stressful. You know, the car problem, I still don't know what's wrong with my car. They're, they're taking their sweet dandy old time, which I guess is better than them going quickly and mean charging coming. you on ordering parts and getting a two thousand dollar bill yeah and then me having to come back in a week later because they didn't fix the actual problem <laughs> yeah that'll happen um but yeah weddings are weddings are stressful for sure in the planning yeah. stages i remember i would get a call or a text all the time what do you think of this what do you want to do with this and three little words that would get me in trouble is i don't care yeah um, in the aspect of what i, I meant and i I say that a lot about a lot of things. And when I say I don't care, it's not that I don't care. It's that I could go either way. So I don't have like a solidified opinion on what this is. You make the decision because it does not matter to me what direction we go, but I do still care. And that one tends to get me in some deep water often. Because your opinion matters. I mean, I know we're not talking about marriage, but like... When it comes to being in a relationship, one thing I've noticed is that you could not care, but they want you to care. Yeah. Because apparently our opinions matter. (laughs) Yeah. So, you know, stress and how do we handle it righteously with Christ? Yes. I did just glance across and read that off of his notes. So um, that is uh, actually a phenomenal question. A phenomenal topic because because we have like in our lives we're, we're always going to deal with stress like the thing that i've been told whenever i'm stressed by you know my counselor or any of like my my parents or anybody i go and talk to about it like we're gonna have stress so it's not like we can just assume that we're going to be stress free for a period of time and then all of a sudden an amount of stress right i've i've had you know 
months, mostly in school, where every week there's something that is stressing me out. Now, there's levels of stress. You can be paralyzed by stress or you can just be kind of uncomfortable with the stress. But either way, we need to learn more than just kind of coping skills because like reading about stress and kind of studying it, a a lot of people, um, a lot of doctors will say that some stress is good. It kind of keeps us in check. It, it, uh, you know, God gives it to us to kind of force us to, to, I'd say like take another glance, relook at our surroundings. Is there something we need to change? Right. It's kind of the same thing with, that he does with like conviction. When we're convicted about something, it's not necessarily that it's a bad thing. It's actually God being gracious with us and saying, Hey, there might be something here that I want you to change. I want you to dig deeper and, and reach towards me. And the same thing can be happened when we have a stress, stress in our lives. And, uh, but we need to know how to handle that because sometimes we don't handle it. I've, I myself tend, when I get the most stressed, I either get, uh, like feel paralyzed and I'll just feel like I'm just stiff. I don't know what to do, but I feel like I need to do something, but I don't know what to do. Or I'll get very snappy with the people around me. And so when they start to ask questions, all right, like, like I, I do this with my parents, you know, ever since I was a, you know, a kid, like if my parents start asking me questions, all right, what's kind of the root cause of where the stress is so we can attack it and solve this problem. When I don't know, and you're in that stressful moment, sometimes you can respond. I know I'll respond by just either just freezing and kind of like your brain freezes up and it doesn't know how to respond, doesn't know what to do. Um, but when we envelop ourselves in Christ and when um, we, obviously when we, as we grow closer to him, what we tend to notice is that the, the fruits of being patient and um, being calm and um, kind of like what James talks about when he says, um, be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to become angry, that becomes more of a natural reaction the closer we get in relationship with Christ because of the fact that we'll respond as Christ responded. Jesus had plenty of stressful moments. And I mean, he, if anybody had the most stressful life, it's him. Um, but yet he responded in such a way that he was always pointing towards his father, right? And saying, how do you want me to respond to this? And how can this benefit you? Because ultimately our purpose is is to honor God and to worship God while we're here on this earth. Like, like, I, I believe that we are not here for any other purpose besides to reach other people, teach them about Christ and worship him and be in relationship with him. So for like those, that's like the key to this life. And obviously there's no key to life, but like that's, I feel like what everybody's kind of general purpose is, is to reach other people and tell them about Christ, worship Christ and be in relationship with him. And when and as you continue to grow in that, your life won't become less stressful, but your life will become more peaceful in stress, right? Um, and so as, as we get into that, um, you know, I'll, I'll read a lot of scripture. Um, I believe in context um, to, to what Jesus and Paul and, you know, what they're talking about when it comes to stress and fear and anxiety and worry and stuff like that. But yeah, that's, that's kind of the synopsis of everything. And, and for me, when I get in a stressful situation, I almost take on a f- fight or flight type yeah. of, you know, some people freeze, they paralyze. I have to do everything Yeah. at once. Yeah. So, you know, I've had, it's like when you're driving in the winter. Yeah. That can be stressful. And it's that, okay, I start sliding on the ice. Am I just going to not do anything or am I going to react? Or am I going to react? And if I react, am I going to overreact? Yeah. And with me, what I find is I lack that patience in that overthought of, okay, take a breath. Let's, let's get a solution to this in a healthy way. Yeah. Because I will say not, All of my solutions are the healthiest way. You know, I can name nine different ways to skin a cat, but 
what's the best way to get it, the job done in exactly. a healthy manner. Exactly. So uh, starting out here, and obviously you can read the verses um, or just listen. That's up to you. But uh, we're starting out here in uh, Matthew 6, uh, 25 through 34. And I'll use Matthew 24 as context. Um, but uh, talking here is uh, Jesus on the Sermon on the Mount, and he says, No one can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one or love the other, or he will be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and money. So as a reference, before he gets into do not be anxious about life, he's first talking about how we cannot serve money and we cannot serve God at the same time. We have to serve one or the other. Yep. Um, and so at for context, I think... This plays a big part because sometimes money, actually, I think when you look it up, I can't remember, it's it's one, if not the biggest causes of fights and marriages is money and how to handle money. Um, that can be stressful, right? And so um, I think there's a reason that God is referencing that right before he talks about do not be anxious about life. But I think you can also you know, extrapolate that to you know, this next section to kind of everything in life. Don't be anxious about anything. Um, but here, continuing in uh, verse 25, he says, Therefore, I tell you, do not be anxious about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink, nor about your body, what you will put on. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothing? Look at the birds of the air. They neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not of more value than they? And which of you, uh, by being anxious, can add a single hour to the span of his life? And why are you anxious about clothing, considering the lilies of the field, how they grow? They neither toil nor spin. Yet, I tell you, even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. But if God so clothes the grass of the field, which today is alive and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, will he not much more clothe you, O you of little faith? Therefore, do not be anxious, saying, What will we eat, or what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? For the Gentiles seek after these things, and your heavenly Father knows that you need them all. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. Therefore, do not be anxious about tomorrow, for by for Ah, for tomorrow will be anxious for itself. Sufficient for the day is its own trouble. So in this, before we get into kind of, you know, the World Health Organization definition of like stress and all of that, which I will, I will read. I feel like God right here is, is for a couple of things telling us we need to ultimately, the, ultimately the the response we need in an anxious, stressful, fearful, worry situation is we need to trust that God loves us so much that he's not going to, I don't want to say this like God's some kind of genie, like, oh, we're going to have perfect lives because God loves us so much. But God's going to respond in such a way because he knows what's best for us. And we need to trust that he's walking with us, not just watching us walk. Um, this kind of reminds me of the, the poem about the, the feet in the sand and how, you know, we get to the end and we're like, where the heck were you, God? God, you suck. You weren't there with me. And God's like, no, you idiot. I was carrying you the whole time. Look at the footprints. Um, and I think that's kind of what he's saying here is he's like, I love you so much. You do not need to be anxious. Now he understands that we're going to be anxious, that we have stress in our life, um, but what he's telling us right here is that we need to seek first God and his kingdom. And then secondly, we need to have faith that he is going to provide for us the things that we need and sometimes the things that we don't need, but he blesses us anyways, right? Um, he's going to clothe us. He's going to feed us. We have to trust him with that. Um, but we also have to trust, you know, that he's going to take care of us spiritually too. That's another big thing too. I, I know at times, even as, you know, I would say a strong Christian man, like there are times when those thoughts pop into your head of like, man, you know, especially at like funerals, 
am, am I truly saved? Am I truly going to go to heaven? You don't know. But that's, where, that's why it's by faith alone. It's by faith that God's going to take care of the things that you cannot take care of. And you have to come to peace with that, that you're literally not in control. And I'll get to that later about how little you have to think of yourself. You have to kill that pride in you. Um, to get to a point to where you can find peace that passes all understanding. Um, but it takes time and it takes constant, you know, I'll say entanglement with God, kind of like, you know, Jacob did before he became, like, before God called him Israel. Like, he entangled himself with Christ and was like, I'm not letting you go. We're going to figure this thing out. And I think that we need to do that every mo every moment of every day. Um but anyway, so there, there's that. And then uh, another verse that I kind of want to reference is, uh, to, before we get into it, is 1 John 4.18, which says, uh, There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear. Um, for fear has to do with punishment, and whoever fears has not, has not been perfected in love. So obviously the only one who can have perfect love is Jesus, is God, right? God the Father is the, the Trinity. Like They're the only ones that can have perfect love. Um but if we are fearing anything, n not to say that fear is completely and wholly a bad thing. I believe God gave it to us to, to warn us of things. Um, you know, uh, fearing situations isn't necessarily bad, but how we respond with fear um, can be bad, right? The coping skills can be unhealthy, can be bad. And I think here, um, a good way to kind of take this and apply it to our lives is that um, God God the Father, God, God the Holy Spirit, and then God the Son, right? So the Trinity. When we go to them and God, when we go to God and we say that we're fearing a situation, we need to realize that he is perfect, that his love is perfect. And if his love is perfect, kind of referencing back, then will he not take care of us? And, and I think sometimes we get so caught up in what we can understand that we forget about the fact that God is even there, or we kind of slap God in the face and be like, God, you don't understand what I'm going through right now, when God does, ultimately. And I think we forget that a lot of the times. I know I, I, know I do, so... When I say we do, I'm referencing myself we, too, so... We look, at, we look at these things in that, in that worldly aspect of, you know, when you look at that verse and you see... He feeds the birds. Yeah. You know, he takes care of literally everything. Yeah. And in our little peon minds, we don't grasp, you know, it's like you hear him talk about space and this yeah. and that. We don't fully understand how large that chasm yeah. is. Personally, I don't care to in that aspect of space. I don't but, think it matters. <laughs> it, but we miss we get so caught up on these little details yeah. that we miss the greater picture right. of, and I mean, it's hard. Yeah. And when you're talking about stress, we talk about stress all the time in yeah. our lives, but it's so difficult to sit down and talk about yeah. stress, to have a true conversation other than, oh, I'm stressed because of this. Oh, I'm stressed because of that. Oh, I don't know why this is making me so stressed out. But to actually sit down and dive into what stress is, yeah. why it happens, it's such a weird conversation to have. It, it can be, for sure. I think um, I think sometimes we we look at stress as... This, such this as like such a normal thing it's just like oh i've got stress again when i think we forget sometimes like and i'll get into this later like um you know it it said in and uh in matthew uh i think it was verse 34 um it said uh um therefore do not be anxious about tomorrow for tomorrow will be anxious uh and it's a felt oh no it was before that where's it at um Forget where it's at. I'm missing it. But either way, it was, it was about it maybe in one of the verses later on, but um where like Jesus or Paul references it and says that it's about the kingdom of God, like um to remember that the kingdom of God is at hand, right? And I think sometimes we get so caught up in our world of, oh, my car's not working. 
great, where am I going to get the money to pay for all of this, right? Oh, you know, I got a wedding to plan. Where am I going to get the money to pay for all, right? We just talked about how, mm-hmm. how important money is in all of our life. And I think sometimes, I'll say it for me, in this kind of season of my life right now, something I keep going back to is I don't know where I'm going to get the money from. I got to pay for this. I got to pay bills. I got to do this, right? I got to get the money for the wedding. Are we going to have enough money for the wedding, right? Um, and even not money, right? I'm okay. Like, are, is this going to get fixed? Is that right? I have to find a house, right? Am I going to forget the money? Am I even going to find a house that I can move up here in the time, in the timing that it needs to, right? And we get so caught up in our lives. I'll, I'll say this. I get so caught up in my life that sometimes I forget the most important thing, which is why am I here in the first place to love people? minister to people, show people Christ? And am I doing that when I'm constantly talking about how stressful my life is? Or am I doing that when I forget my stress, give it to God and say, now that doesn't mean I can't deal with, right? If my car's broken down, I got to deal with it. I got to take it to the mechanic. I got to figure, I may have to find ways to get money, but stressing in that in such a way where that's what I'm thinking about. And I'm not thinking about, okay, where where might God be using this, right? Where might this be a situation where someone asks me and goes, dude, how are you handling this without like freaking out? Because I just handled this a month ago and I was freaking out. Like, like, how are you doing that? And that creates an opportunity to say, dude, let me tell you about Jesus. Cause there, like, there's a peace in there and, and, and be able to minister to that person. So if yeah. I can, if I can add this in here yeah. b- before we even get to the stress of money. Let's go to money in general. Yeah. Money is not bad. It's when money no. supersedes. Yeah. When money is the top priority. That's when you focus on when money. When you focus on money more than you do, yeah. That that's where the and I and I just want to say that because young people or young Christians who yeah. read the Bible, oh, so I got to sell everything if I want to follow Jesus. No. No. Because there's a lot of people with a lot of money that do a lot of good. That for, do a and, lot of and good, they, and that really, really love Jesus. Yeah, but it, that money doesn't supersede. Yeah, in in the same thing with stress, you're you're going to have stress. Yeah, it's when your stress supersedes Seeds. Christ that, yeah. Christ that that kind of creates a problem. Um, I want to take a break here real quick. Yeah. I will say I have a little bit of a cold, so if there's a few breaks in here, it's probably because I need water or blow my nose and or cough really, really loud. So we'll be right back, guys. All right, guys, we are back here. Like I said, excuse my um, coldness. So if I sound a little nasally, you know, that's been going around again. Abby had it last week, and I have it here towards the tail end of the week. Don't get me sick. Well, I'm also very sore, but I think it's because I've been farming for a week yeah, and getting the snot beat out of me over bumpy fields. So um, we're back, so I'm going to let James yeah. take off where he was at before. Yeah, so let's, let's just get into this. So um, – doing research and stuff like that, like my first kind of step was just like, how are we going to define stress, you know, kind of just run through it from, I won't necessarily say like a worldly standard, but from like the world's standard of like, how do you handle it? All that stuff. Right. So the, the who I like that. It's not the band, but uh, the world health organization, uh, they define stress as, uh, stress can be defined as a state of worry or mental tension caused by a difficult situation. Stress is a natural human response that prompts us to address challenges and threats in our lives. Everyone experiences stress in some degree. The way we respond to stress, however, makes a big difference to our overall well-being. Very true statement. Our, you know, We talked about how you handle stress a little bit differently than how I handle stress, um, but it can affect us, which is like... Like you talked about like some health issues that you've been having, like when you were getting like dizzy and, and all that stuff like that. 
uh, sometimes they will look and like they'll ask you questions. I don't know if they did when you went there, but I'm I'm sure at some point yeah. they probably ask you questions like, "All right, what's your life look like? Are, like, do you have this insanely stressful life? What's right now? What's your stress level? Yeah, like they they ask you that, and and it's important because it can affect your your mental but also your physical well being. Um, but it, again, the reason we're having this topic is because it can affect our well being and how we are doing both spiritually, mentally, and physically. Um, and so it's important to keep tabs on that. Um, but how you manage stress is important. And so this is what the World Health Organization says. Uh, learn stress management. Um, so they say uh, doing what matters in times of stress aims to equip people with practical skills to cope with stress. A few minutes each day are enough practice to guide self-help techniques the guide can be used alone or with the accompanying audio exercise so they have this whole setup on the world health organization and i didn't get into it but like they have this whole setup of like all right we're going to teach you how to handle stress in your life and no offense to the world health organization i'm sure they have some very good techniques that actually do help but ultimately christ you know our you know God is going to be the one that really helps us handle our stress more than anything. Now he he will definitely use techniques and stuff like that. But um one of their one of their pieces of advice is keep a daily routine. Having a daily schedule can help us and our time uh to help us use our time efficiently and feel more in control. I want I want to focus on that. It says feel more in control, which is kind of the opposite of what scripture says, which is we need to give up control to yeah. God. So it's very, you know, it seems counterintuitive with what, like what scripture says, you know, and vice versa. Like, like one is saying one thing, you need to have, take control of your life. And, and scripture is saying, no, 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 you need to release control and give it to Christ, um, to give it to God. Uh, a few minutes each day are not, oh, sorry, I went back. Um, set time for regular meals, time with family members, exercise, daily chores, and other recreational activities. Now, those things, those things can help. When you have a schedule, it helps your brain kind of like, you know, stay on course and not feel like you don't have control. Having control in certain areas can be helpful. I can agree with that. Keep a, sl- a good sleep schedule. I see yeah. you're going to get into that. So yeah, um, that, and that's a big one for me. Yeah, uh, because when I was growing up, milk and cows, three thirty in the morning, till nine in the morning yeah and then it was three thirty in the afternoon till nine o'clock at night yeah and then with some field work in there in the summers yeah and then i started driving truck for cisco yeah and it was four in the morning yeah. so naturally if i'm going to and that created a stress on its own because if i was going to be to work at four i had to get up at three right and then i get home at five or let's say two in the afternoon right my wife gets home at five I'm going to want to go to bed about 7, yeah. and she's going to want to go to bed about 10. Right. So there's a three-hour overlap there yeah. of it gets back to your family time. Yeah. So that was a stress on its own. Yeah. No, 100%. Like, like when you... Yeah, like you kind of just nailed it with like when we have work and like when you're married, like you may have a different work schedule. I know I know couples that like, like, like she works like second shift during the day, right? But then he works third shift. And so when he comes home, she's leaving for work. Yep. And then when she comes home, he's going to bed so that way he can, like, he's already in bed so that way he can go to work, right? I have, I have multiple examples of people in my life where she works nights, he works days, or vice versa. Yeah. And that's stressful. It, it is very stressful. But, but the reason getting I, sleep is important. The reason I brought that up is just to see the correlation, mm-hmm. you know, give an example of how a lot of these things run together. Right. And also... Yeah, I mean that's yeah. basically. I it. mean, in getting sleep, like I, I won't knock, <laughs> I won't knock them for saying that getting plenty of sleep is helpful. Um, you know, be consistent. Go to bed at the same time each night and get up at the same time each morning, including on the weekends, if possible. Make your sleeping area quiet, dark, relaxing, um, a comfortable temperature. Limit limit your use of electronic devices such as TVs, computers, which is harder than you think. It's very hard. I do it every night. I I know that uh, um I know that I tend to like I'll be up playing video games and then I'll watch a TV until I'm ready to go to bed and I turn it off, right? So and, funny funny about that is is uh Abby got me playing solitaire on my phone. <laughs> and 
I went from like level one to level 40 in like two weeks. Just I just play it at night before I go to bed. And it's funny because it it makes my eyes tired. Yeah. And it kind of shuts my mind down. It's like reading the book of numbers. It helps you sleep. <laughs> but I but I notice the quality of sleep is, is not as And good, I'm a horrible yeah. sleeper. I mean, you, yeah. you've seen that when you come in the house and I'm on the couch at three in the morning. Yeah. I'm a horrible sleeper. So I don't require a lot of sleep. But it's definitely stressful. Yeah, when it's not as good. When of it's sleep. not as good as it should yeah. be. Well, and I mean, it makes me think of like how you know how how God kind of handled the whole Elijah situation, yeah. right? Elijah like is, I don't want to say fighting off all these you know prophets of Baal, but he's kind of like battling them, trying to get Israel back in kind of God's corner, right? And he and, he, and he's just putting effort and faith and energy into like doing like i don't even say doing these wondrous works he wasn't doing anything besides standing there and be like all right god you do your thing right yeah. right but when he finds out that like it's not just oh okay whenever i see an armed guard from queen jezebel they're gonna want to arrest me or kill me i'll just walk the other direction now it's like i i have a bounty on my head and you know Joe Smith over there, when I go and see him, he might know the bounty and be like, ah, screw this. I'm going to get my money, right? Turn him in. And so like, he's now just immensely stressed and he's, and he's looking for God. He's trying to, to find God. And one of God's first things is eat, sleep, eat, sleep, eat, sleep. All right. Now that you're back to reality, let's handle the stress. Right. And so sometimes, you know, having good sleep, getting good rest allows us to just naturally run on the energy that we need in order to think logically and think, I'd say spiritually and remind ourselves in stressful situations. Like if I'm tired, I know that in a stressful situation, my instant response, right? You think about a little kid, right? When a little kid's tired and they haven't had their nap and they're super sleepy And they're just whining and whining and whining and whining because they're upset or they're stressed out about something, right? That's why sometimes a parent will just be like, go to your room, go to bed, right? And they may say it harshly, but like they know that you need sleep in order to function, in order to think. And that, and knowing that you need to give your stress to God, right? And, and, and it'll be less in control. Sometimes it is important for us to get that good sleep. So they reference how important sleep is. Connecting with others. When you're alone, uh, you tend to kind of get in your head. You stew. Yeah, you you stew in your mind. And uh, I I know for me, I have this little voice in my head that when I'm alone, uh, sometimes I have to put on like worship music because I feel like I'm not going to hear the voice of God because I feel like I'm alone. And so my brain will just like think and think and think and think and think. And sometimes it's like, I just need to not think. Otherwise, I'm just going to get stressed. I'll just listen to music and just listen to worship music and just remind myself, envelop myself with that, you know, you know, worship of, of God and remind myself of how great he is, how he's in control, right? And so that that's important, um, to, but also to connect with the, I'll get this I'll, later on too about what scripture says about how to handle stress and stuff like that. Um, but God gave us each other to be together it's you know there's a reason it's called the the body of christ and not just you right you know god god didn't pick one guy and he's like all right i'm gonna train you and then you're gonna go out and train one guy and then he's gonna right he grabbed 12 people and said i'm gonna teach all of you and then you're gonna go out and find more to start churches right i forget like what the exact number is but i think it's like you gotta have like 10 people or something like that in order to like like that's what that's when they would consider you at church is like you have to have like ten people in it or something like that, um, but like there's a reason God gave us the body the body of Christ is is because it's important for us to connect with others to share each other's burdens, uh, and we'll get into that later. Eat healthy. Um, easier said than done. Easier said than done, but is still important. We don't want to you know just eat you know, candy and sugar and more sugar and more sugar, right? Like one, you gain weight, but when you gain weight, like, um, I, I was talking to, um, you know, my fiance about this, like we, 
we were talking about like trying to eat healthier and stuff like that. And one of the things that I'm realizing is like, as a man, when you eat, when, when you eat too much sugar and you don't work out, your testosterone lowers and your estrogen raises, which is not how God intended it, right? There's a reason that men are supposed to have testosterone. There's a reason there's testosterone boosting medicine for, you know, older gentlemen who struggle to, to work out and build that testosterone. It's because, you know, you know, we, t we talk about marriage, right? Yeah. Like it, it improves, helps improves your physical relationship with your wife. Um, it, it's intended to, to help us, um, be able to do things that men are required to do. Uh, it, it's important to do that. But when you're not eating healthy, when you're not having a healthy lifestyle, secondary exercise regularly, yeah. like when you're not doing that, you're actually, like, you're being counterproductive because now you're being idle. You know, the Bible says, don't be a busybody, right? Like, yeah. like now you're being idle um, and you're not, allowing your body to help you you're you're forcing your body to hinder yourself and so instead of your body being something you know eating healthy instead of that helping you get to the point to where you can trust god and and god is your focus it's kind of adding you know a, a second and third and fourth and fifth level into handling stress instead of it just being like well i'm eating healthy i'm getting good sleep I just need to trust God more right yeah. now. It's, Oh man, I need to do this and this and this, and then it just adds more stress onto your life of, oh, I need to do all these things. And I want to interject a point in here too. And just stress, stress life in general is I, I thought about this years ago and I found it written down. I actually looked for it yesterday after you and I had been texting yeah. or whatever day it was about doing this. I think it was Thursday. And I found it in one of my books that I, when I say book, I mean my notebook that yeah. I had written, and it was titled The Hidden Identity of Coping Mechanisms. Okay. And when I started reading that and some of the things, I mean, I wrote this stuff, I was like 20, 21. Right, yeah. And I look back on that, and I look at things, you know, a lot of the things that you've in he said in here mm -hmm. is the hidden identity of coping mechanisms, um, drink a lot of alcohol Yeah. in my day. Yeah. That in its own increases your stress. Yeah. Because now, you know, let's say if you're a minor, you know, right, yeah. I, I'm partying to, because I have too much stress in my life. Now you create a stress of nobody finding out that you're a minor who's drinking alcohol because you don't want to get in trouble. Right. And that stresses I'm, you out even more than the initial situation right. of that you were stressed about. Well, on top of that, though, you also got to think about how alcohol affects your brain, too. Yeah. Like it, it dumbs you down. So, like, like, I'm just going to be blatantly honest here. I can watch videos of stupid people drinking alcohol and like, like nothing is funnier than a guy being like, hold my beer, watch me do this. Yeah. Right. And then he just flops and you're hilarious. But when you think about it on a level of just like, they're getting drunk, their brain does not work when you right? like, like I'm, I'm not here to talk about like, you know, alcohol's yeah. bad or don't drink alcohol. Right. Like that's not the kind of the topic we're on, but like, like you bringing it up, like like alcohol as a coping mechanism is something that is very unhealthy because we go back to it's ta it's the same thing as money then at that point yeah. where that's your focus of when that something, becomes your god yeah it becomes your god yeah. is I how do I handle it alcohol instead of oh how do I handle this. Well, like, cause I, I get it. Like even Paul told Timothy, yeah. like you're stressing out about life, dude, have a glass of wine, calm your stomach down. Like, like we'll figure this out. He didn't say go to the bar, get drunk, yeah. deal with it later. Right. And I use that example of alcohol just because that's a personal example right. of my life. And we're not here to bash anyone who is in right. any of no. these situations, of course. Uh, but I just use that as a lot of times the coping mechanism creates more stress it does. than the initial situation. And getting back to how does God want us to handle stress right. is just, I've said this before, and I think I said it in a podcast a while ago, is I found out when I was trying to get rid of my baggage, yeah. when I tried to do it my way, it always reared its ugly head to come get me. Yeah. But when I took it to the cross and I yeah. laid it down, then it was finished and it was set in stone yeah finished and it was gone and i no longer stressed about 
yeah. certain things. And that doesn't mean that it necessarily comes back up. Like you're <laughs> going to have a stressful situation. Oh, of course. Where like I still, you know, I'm 25. I still at times will get so stressed that I'll be like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, right? And I, I can't do anything or I'll freeze. Or I'll just get snappy and yep. I'm like, <clears throat> I'll need to go punch a wall, right? Like I need to do something um, about it. And it's not a healthy way of coping with this. Um and so those things will pop back up. We are human, right? Like, like there's going to be temptation to, to handle it inappropriately. Yep. But I think is important is, is having kind of coping mechanisms for your coping mechanisms that when you hit those ugly ones, right? Like we'll use alcohol as an example. When you have a stressful situation and for your entire life, you've trained your brain, you've trained your body to go, I need to go to the bar and get drunk, Right. When you have those thoughts and even like, oh man, I'm going to pick up the keys to go out in the car, right? To have coping mechanisms that kind of switch your brain yep. and go, wait a second, hold on. Let me think through this. Okay, no, this isn't what I want. Okay, let's go to the cross. Let's let's pray, right? And not beat yourself up because you had that thought of, I need to go to the bar and get drunk, right? And we say, and you know, I use alcohol because it's an easy, right, it's yeah. an easy scapegoat to use. Food. Yeah, you know, overeating. You yeah. know, I'm going to use, I never thought I'd do this. I'm going to use an Austin Powers reference <laughs> in a Christian podcast. Because when you hear it, you laugh at it because of right. the setting. It's a funny, funny yeah. situation. But there's a point, I'm not going to say the character's name. Right. But he says, I eat because I'm unhappy and I'm unhappy because I, I eat. eat. Yeah. It's funny in the movie because in it's the a, context. In right. the context yeah. because it's funny. But when you really sit and think about that, you're like, it's true. Okay. I eat because I'm unhappy, and I'm unhappy because I, I eat. eat. It's like the guy that wants it's to... It's just the qu- cycle of it's unhealthiness. Like, it's like the guy that wants to quit smoking, yeah. and he's unhappy because he can't quit smoking, but he smokes, smokes because, because he's, he's un- unhappy. He's yeah. unhappy. Yeah. So you look at those different coping mechanisms and how those don't fix the problem. They replace right. the problem. Right. That's why like, when you talk to... I, I know somebody, and I won't use their name. But I know somebody that used to be really addicted to drugs, like really badly addicted to drugs. And one of the things they taught him when he was was like trying to get out of being addicted is you need to to train your body. You need to substitute it with something else. So you know what he did? He worked out, right? Now, you have to be careful because you don't want working out, right? If I don't work out, I'm going to go back to drugs because you don't want that thought you in your you mind. You don't want that to become your... Right, your idol, yes. right? Um, or your new god. Or your new god, right? And and uh, but it is what they teach you, right? Yeah. And so even if like you're trying to like I even if you know like me, you know I'm I'm working towards my masters and stuff like that to um to become like a therapist smart, and stuff like that, right? Smart feller, <laughs> the smart feller and the fart smeller. Yeah. Um. But like one of the things that they, they teach you is kind of like. W- one, help the person come up with it on their own because they're more likely statistically to do it, to actually like change that part of their lifestyle if they come up with it. And then two, help them take step by step. Don't don't let them get into that mindset of, okay, I've got a I'm at point A. And I need to be at point Z, so I need to focus on getting to point Z. No, you need to start at A and focus on getting to B. Because if you get to B, you can look back and go, hey, I'm not an A anymore. Oh, there's a, there's progress, right? Let's move. Now, there's other things like being stagnant, you know, getting to you know X and being like, oh, well, I'm all done. No, nope, we need to get to Z. But like, you know, I'm not where I was. Yeah. So let's stop here. Right, you don't want to get there. Either. You don't want to get there. You yeah. want, you know, you want to keep moving, and that goes with a lot of other things. But let's rein, yeah. rein this back in. Right. So, all of that to say, you know, reading through those different, you know, how to handle stress, right? The the getting good sleep. We'll call the them being, mechanisms. Right, mechanisms. Yeah, all those different mechanisms that were taught in the counseling realm and by the world, right? Like, like. Those things are important, can be helpful. Yeah, we're not saying that those are bad. Right, yeah. Those are bad, you know, we're not saying that you 
can't change or you're a heathen if you right, if yeah. you choose those things not at all because i found in my life those things do help they do they really do from a worldly perspective those things help will they yeah. fully eliminate the problem i don't no. know well i mean we never really will fully no. eliminate the problem um and that because one problem you get rid of it another problem comes right back and off. to me that's the misconception with you know i don't want to go there okay <laughs> But that's that's the that's the misconception, the misconception with stress, with stress. Yeah. and there's a lot of those out there. That we could have a whole episode. We could have a whole episode on misconceptions about life. Um, but uh, so as we as we talked about in Matthew, you know, God said that you know I will take care of you. I love you. If if I love you know the birds and the the flowers and the fields and like if, if I take care of those things. How much more do I love you and take care of you, right? The one who was made in his image. Right, exactly. Um, But that kind of made me think as I started to pray, ironically, that being one of the solutions. But I I just started to ask myself, like, okay, what are the solutions that kind of the Bible says for us to take, right? And the first, I'll just go over the three and then we can go through them one by one. But it says... um, First is by prayer. Prayer is our communication with God. If we're not praying regularly and not just praying like, oh, dear Lord, I have this problem and this problem and this problem and this problem. Take it away, right? Like God's kind of a genie thing. Like like that's not what we're talking about with prayer. Prayer is like, like if I was talking with you and all I ever did was, hey, Josh, I need help with this. Hey, Josh, I need help with this. Hey, Josh, I need help with this. We right? have those people. You, right? You would get irritated and be like, I hope I don't see this person. Now, God's not going to do that with us. He wants us to come to yeah. him, right? And he can handle us only ever, but he knows that that's not right. He knows it's not healthy, and he knows that he's got better for us, but we need to trust him with more than just, hey, God, you're a genie. Will you just do what I ask you? Um the second is by surrender. We have to surrender everything, including our stress, to God. Yep. Um, that that's where you kind of get into the realm of like the receiving the peace that passes all understanding. Like the reason that you can get to that point is by surrendering, so that way Christ can take control. And the last is by uh, by communion with others. We talked about this. Um, as the world says, to to connect with family and friends and stuff like that and be in connection with those people. Being in communion with with uh, members of the body, with members of Christ who, who are strong Christian men and women who in moments of stress can either pick you up and help you in that, right? Like like um, if you're trusting God but you don't know where the money is and someone in the, is like, hey, I want to bless you with this by being in communion with those, with the body of Christ, and they do that. Or even if it's just, hey, remember, you need to focus on Christ. In the import, the importance of the selection of your people. Right, yeah. yeah. And I use you for an, as, an example because oh, between these sections, when we were on our break, our two-minute, I got to use the bathroom and blow my nose, turned into a 25-minute conversation right, of yeah. life, is, you know, there's a set group of people and at the church that I go to. Right. And same said with them. Yeah. Certain people, and, and we're all friends, we're all family, we're part right. of the body. Yeah. But when I, before I had those people, right. it was, I was never told well, really told well, just pray about it. It was, you make your own way. So that was the mindset yeah. that I was in was, you know, you watch on all the macho action movies. I make my own luck. Yeah. You know. <laughs> which sounds cool in the movie, which sounds but it's cool. not realistic. And as men, we're macho yeah. men. We want to make our own way. So in those times of stress, yeah. a lot of times that's automatically, that's what my mind reverts to being, being the macho man. Yeah. Yeah. Is we come back to, I just got to fix this right. now. And right. we've had that conversation. I'm in control of my destiny. We've had that yeah. conversation as men when our wives bring a problem to us. We don't necessarily want to listen. We want to fix the problem. Right. And we have to train ourselves to just listen because yes. like I, I, t- I tell my fiance all the time, I'm like, I'll ask her and I'm trying to get more to the practice of doing this, but like she'll, she'll either bring something or something just kind of rears its ugly head. And I'm just like, okay, is this one of those? I just sit here and listen and bite my tongue. 
until you're done and I say, oh, well, it's going to be okay, babe. I love you. Not like mockingly, but like, yeah. like, I love you. I hope this gets better. Or is this one of those like, like, babe, I need you to fix this, right? Then it's all right. Let me go grab my tools or, you know, whatever, you know, solution needs to come about, right? Like, like. I think I've yeah. been more involved with your wedding than I was mine. That's probably Because I, I was talking one night at the yeah. church, and I'm like, hey, is there anything that you guys need from me that I can do? Right. And it started off as, oh, how are you? How is everything going? And yeah. it turned into, if I can help you... Tell me. <laughs> tell me. And this might shock you guys. I am not a wedding planner. Really? So for me to go up to somebody who I, I love and care about being your fiance yeah. and who I've known longer than I've known you by probably yeah. triple now yeah. is I want to help you if I can, but I probably can't. <laughs> I was just wanting to fix something if I could. Yeah. No, a hundred percent. And, uh, and, and so those are kind of the three like big things that I've, I've kind of felt like how the Lord write scripture out and how, you know, you see people in the old Testament deal with stress and stuff like that. Like, um, like they're not, they're not alone with it. Or if they are kind of like Abraham, like that, that had to be a stressful moment. Like, I know this is off track, but like Abraham with Isaac, like that was stressful, but that's where we get into the whole surrender part where he just surrendered it to God and was like, I have no control over this. So I'm giving it to you and I'm trusting that you know best. Right, and that's difficult to do, but that's kind of what God asks us to do. I, I am under the under the belief that there is more secondhand context of stress in the Bible than a lot of people think of, because you can yeah. connect stress to a lot of things. Right, like oh, I'm about to get thrown into a burning pit of fire. Yeah, <laughs> because I didn't bow down to this one dude. I'm sure there was some stress there. Oh yeah, or hey. Saul is coming to kill me, and I'm on the run. No stress there. Right. You know, Jonah, I don't want to do this. There's probably some stress there. Yeah. So stress is a current theme, even, you know. Even when it doesn't mention, like, like I was researching it, and I I looked up just, like, you had to do that vague search of, like, stress in the Bible, right? And so I looked that up, and it was like, there's no comments of stress in the Bible. And, And then you have to realize that, like, oh, there is. It just doesn't say stress. Yeah. And I think we've missed that sometimes. But get, get, kind of getting back into it, let's let's talk about prayer and how powerful prayer is. This is kind of like uh, this was one of my questions um, that like I've been having more and more, especially with like, that like my dad and I will talk about a lot, which is which was being a person and a church and a family of prayer, right? Because prayer is powerful. And uh, there's there's a quote I forget who it's from, um, but my dad's referenced it before, and, and the quote is basically I don't. He's a pastor, and he says I, I don't I don't judge how well my church is doing by how many people are here on a Sunday. I judge how well my church is doing and how healthy my church is by how many people show up on Tuesday night prayers, prayer meetings. And, and and ever since I've heard that, that's kind of been something that's super powerful to me is because prayer is such an important thing that I think sometimes we undervalue it and yeah. do it wrong. Now, I'm not saying I know perfectly how to pray, but I think being honest about God is teach me how to pray, you know, all of that is important. But here in 1 Thessalonians 5, 16 through 18, it says, Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Go back to what's most important for us, okay, we need to rejoice always, even even in stressful situations. And we know that that's difficult, right? Like you're not just going to naturally be joyful Everybody at all times. Everybody around me is dying. I'm going to get on my knees and, right, you know. Right, or like Paul and, and Silas in, in prison, right? Like they're just yeah. like, oh, okay, whatever. We're just going to praise God, right? But it says pray without ceasing. I think of... Uh, um, uh, Samuel's mom, Hannah, yeah. and how she was praying so much and so earnestly, and she didn't stop to the point to where um, they thought that she was drunk in the middle of the day. 
And I think that that's a representation of sometimes even in stressful situations, God, it's not that like we go to God, like he's a genie and being like, oh, okay, God, can you take this? No, I, I, I want to see your heart in it, right? Because he knows what's best for us. And, and that may sound like, oh man, he's a jerk. Man, he doesn't want to help us. No, he wants to, but he wants to see your heart and see, right? Yeah. How how much faith you have, how earnest you are about God the big, needing The big about picture. God. Yeah. Um, the, the next few verses that it, uh, that I wanted to reference is um, that I feel are important is it said, uh, Jesus speaking here, he says, it is said to them, it is written, my house shall be called a house of prayer, but you make it a den of robbers. Now, I know this may be a little bit out of context, but that's where like the communion with everybody, like coming into prayer with people, like where, where it says where two or more gathered, there I am in their midst, right? God wants us to pray by ourselves and seek God, go to that quiet place. But he also wants us to come with other believers without ceasing and pray and pray and pray. Why? Because prayer is our communication with our Father. And if we're not in good communication with our Father, we're not going to hear his voice, even if his voice is just this loud or still small voice that just says, be still and know that I am God, right? And when we can't hear that, all we're hearing is our own voice and that's when we get caught up and we end up making ourselves our own God and saying, well, God, you're not doing enough. Well, no, God's trying to do enough, but you're not being still enough to listen. And that's difficult, but that's why we also involve other people in our lives. And how often when we're not still enough to listen, will somebody come up to you, lay a hand on you and say, hey, I have this word. Yeah. Whoops. <laughs> I have this word. Yeah. And hence the communion and the fellowship of the yeah. body. And I think that's a really good point. Yeah. I think the other thing, too, is uh, in Matthew uh, 21, uh, verse 22, Jesus continues, and he says, And whatever you ask in prayer, you will receive if you have faith. So it's not just that, oh, I'm going to come to God. It's that you don't leave the presence of God. Even if you have to get up and, and keep going about your day, you keep praying, yeah. even if it's just under your breath. You keep praying and seeking God to the point to where you kind of force yourself into a corner of I, I'm forcing myself to have faith about this. I can't just keep, I just can't move on until I know that I have faith enough. Even if it's just a tiny faith, you know, the faith of a mustard seed can move mountains. Like we need to have, we need to be people of great faith. And that involves trusting that God is going to answer your prayer. And that means coming to Jesus without a conception of what the response is going to be. Yep. You have to go to the, him earnestly, not ceasing, not stopping. You don't stop praying. You don't stop talking to your father. But in that not stop talking to your father, you bring it to other people. You know, you connect with God together. And then on top of that, you have to have the faith that God's going to respond in whatever he, way he wants to. His way is best. Accept the will. Accept the will of God. Yeah, exactly. Yep. And and I, I know I'm going over here and we're pretty close to being done, but um, I think it's astounding. I don't want to say funny because that's yeah. always my go-to word, but I find it astounding at how often people come into a hard time and they're like, okay, Lord, I, you know, I need help with this. And then they go make the problem worse. And right. then they're angry because God didn't God answer didn't, their right, prayer. Yeah. It's like you did not stay in that position of acceptance humbling and yourself, humbling yourself and, yeah. in, in faith that this was actually going to come to fruition. Right, yeah. You just called on him when you needed him and then left the presence right, because yeah. you didn't get an immediate answer. Right, yeah. No, exactly. You kind of just rush through assuming... Hence you God. create your own stress. Right, exactly. Um, and then uh, I think this is part of the... Uh, it, yeah, the surrender... Or no, this is still part of prayer. But it says, uh, um, this is referencing the high priestly prayer that Jesus says. And I think this is the most like pivotal part about this. It says, it's in John 17, 1. And uh, it says, when Jesus had spoken these words, he lifted up his eyes to the heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your son so that the son may glorify you. And I think so many times in our stress, in our lives in general, I think we get so caught up in the fact that we have stress, we have problems, and we go to God about it, but then we don't ask God to do his will. We ask God for our will to be done, 
right? And God wants to to make right. God's the loving father that like, like I always look back to like when my dad was just like, man, I want to bless you guys so much, but you make it so difficult, yep. right? Like I want to give you guys, I want to take you on trips, right? My dad has said that since me, I was a kid and since, and now since my siblings are kids, like he wants to bless us, but we screw it up so much. And I, and I think here, you know, I know this may be a little out of context, but like, I think it's important to remember that our, one of our ultimate goals is for God to glorify us in order that we glorify him. And I think when we are so focused on ourselves that we forget that the important part is to glorify God. That's the important, right? And then finally, when it comes to surrender, Matthew 11, uh, 29 through 30, it says, Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. God wants to take our stress, our burdens, our fears, our worries. He wants us to take them, but we need to fully surrender to him. There's no, okay, well, I'm going to hand it to God at the altar and then walk away still holding on to it. We're not giving it to him. It's like a slap in the face of saying, I don't trust you. Yeah. Right? Like, like he's God. He created the world. When you really think about it, it's like, how, li- how little am I? And that's why he says, right? And that's, you know, that's why it says right here, I am gentle and lowly at heart. But before that, he says, learn from me. Be gentle, be lowly in heart. Do not be prideful. Do not think you are so great and so grand that God himself could not understand. But you need to realize that God wants to gift you with a peace, a peace that passes all understanding when it comes to like stress and stuff like that. But we have to surrender it to him. We have to give it to him. Um, And kind of the last section that we talked about was um, by communion with others. And uh, let me pull that up here because apparently I forgot to pull it up. Um, oh, while, you, while you're bringing yeah. that up, you know, the importance of communion with others is even from a worldly standpoint of being healthy and, and happy is can be just realizing that you're not the only one that's dealing with a lot of these issues. You know, I've, I've said something to somebody before where I've just felt so alone and I've had fellowship with somebody, and they're like, oh, yeah, I'm dealing with that same thing. It's like, okay, now I don't feel like I'm alone in this. I feel like I'm talking to someone who has some experience with dealing with this and can help me out. Right. So even at that point, you know, I know it's not, it is a spiritual fellowship, but it's not a spiritual resolve, if that makes sense. Right, yeah. You know? So that's an important part of fellowship and communion with others, I think. Yeah, so this last verse when it talks about, like, um, that I wanted to reference about us being in communion with each other, um, this is another important part, and I feel how Scripture t- like tries to help us handle our stress and stuff like that. And it says, brothers and sisters, if someone is caught in sin, and I know it's dealing with sin, but I would say handling stress poorly and creating our own little idols, our own little gods, and kind of slapping God in the face and saying, you don't understand, I would say is sinning because we're not putting our faith in him. We're not putting our trust in him, right? So it says, brothers and sisters, if someone is caught in a sin, you who live by the Spirit should restore the person gently, but watch yourselves, and you also may be tempted. Carry each other's burdens, and in this way you will fulfill the law of Christ. If anyone thinks they are something when they are not, they deceive themselves. So this goes all the way back to we need to lower ourselves, be lowly in heart, be gentle and kind as Christ has been, yep. right? That doesn't mean he's not direct, right? You can be direct with someone. You, yeah. can, right? you can directly just like just be blunt and be like, dude, you need to stop. Like, like, I'm not going to be like kind and like, oh, I care about your emotions. You and I are very like, blunt people. Yes. <laughs> so, so we understand that. Yeah. But we also need to remember that we also need to be gentle yep. and kind and remember that, you know, if you're, you're dealing with stress and you come to me and you start to freak out and stress and not know what to do, as a brother in Christ, it's my job to help lift you up help carry that burden for you. But then remember, as you are stressed, it will tempt me to become stressed about handling your stress, yes, yep. right? So we need to be careful ourselves and have our own hearts in check as well, even when we are helping other people. 
But ultimately, like this goes back to what I I said at the very very beginning. Can I make a comment? Yeah, on that? No, go ahead. While we're right there, yeah, you see this in marriage. Yeah, because me being the man, right? I handled. I take care of different stresses. Right. So, little backstory. Um, I haven't been working. Right. Up and you know a lot up until about two weeks ago. You know, now that field work is kick, kicking right, it up yeah. here, I've been putting in, you know, 30, 40 a week. So before that, all that from being the breadwinner for, yeah. you know, the whole time we've been married plus before that is these bills. Yeah. I'm the breadwinner. Money. So, it, money. <laughs> yeah. So if I get visibly stressed about it, now the solid one, the breadwinner. Yeah. And I say solid with quotes. Yeah. The solid one, the breadwinner. I feel like if I show any sign of weakness or weakness or and, and I don't even want to say weakness, I'll just say stress. If right, I'm yeah. if I'm stressed about money, then the one who makes less than me is really gonna be stressed about money. Right. So you feel like I just need to take care of this. I need to handle this so I don't stress out this one. Instead of trusting that they can help you carry that stress, you know. um, And I ain't saying that's right or wrong. Right. That's not the point. I'll tell you it's wrong. You know (laughs) know what I mean. It is. Yeah. But you know, that is humans. That's our thing. And and especially, and I'll say this as men, you know, I'm not saying that every man in every household is the breadwinner. But, you know, I know this, the case is, will be like that with you. Yeah. Because you and I are a lot of like in the aspect of, I think every christian man takes that responsibility yeah it's my it's my job to provide the provider and i shouldn't even say breadwinner because it's more than money yeah the provider yeah and when you don't feel like you are providing and you want to be stressed about it that hurts your pride that hurts your pride therefore more stress because now you're stressed about your pride Pride, you're you're stressed about the bills and which goes back to like in your stress because you don't yeah. want to stress the other one. Yeah. Which so, again goes all the way back to the fact that like we are here for three ish four ish purposes, yeah. which is to love others, to teach them and lead them to Christ, to be in communion with others and Christ, and and to uh worship God. Th- those are the four reasons we're here on this earth. And I think when we get so caught up you know, just even from just a man's perspective, right? Like, like when we get so caught up of like, oh my gosh, I'm not providing, I'm not doing my job, right? Like, like I, I get in this with my fiance right now because I'm trying to ch- change jobs up here, yeah. right? I'm trying to move up here, my whole life up here, right? I'm not the richest person on the planet. Yeah. So like, there's that thought of like, man, like there's, there's been times where I'm like, hey, we want to do something. Can you pay for it? Because I can't pay for it right yeah. now. And that kind of hurts my pride because I want to be able to do yeah. those things. I want to be the one that's like, no, nah, no, 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 I got it. I got it, right? Yep. And I think something that the Lord has been teaching me is, one, to trust him, and two, to realize that ultimately none of this matters when it comes to the kingdom of God. There's a reason it says to to put down what thieves can steal and what rots and gets destroyed yes. here on earth and to put our treasures in heaven it's because there is something more than just having a stress free life that god wants for us god wants us to be in such great communion that, with him because he knows that there is a peace even in stressful moments even when you're still dealing with stress there is a peace that passes all understanding because your heart is is turned and focused towards heaven and towards god and realizing that he deserves his praise, he deserves his worship, and we are here for him. He is not here for us, but you know that doesn't mean that he doesn't want to bless us and love on us. And if if you're one of those people and you're listening to this and you are very bad with conveying the fact that you are stressed about something to someone else yeah. in the form of fellowship and communion, I am horrible with that. Yeah. Like... Probably my wife is the only person that can sense really when something's bothering me. Yeah. Because when I'm to that point, you know, I'm so good at putting on the mask. Yeah. It's scary. It's scary how good I and am. It's unhealthy. At it. And it's unhealthy. Yeah. But it's so. I think a lot of men are like that. You know, it's like if I show up at church on a Sunday morning yeah. and I'm stressed about something, I can go all day 
nothing is wrong. Yeah. You know, you know that I'm a very humorous person. Yeah. I hide every insecurity that I have and every stress I have with sarcasm and humor. Yeah. So you can definitely tell if I'm overly funny or overly... Yeah. Sarcastic is that I'm probably stressed to the max, but you'll never know yeah. what I'm stressed about. Because even like I, I'll I'll say this: sometimes I, I'm definitely a lot. You know, I'm not as good as you as putting on the mask. Um, but I'm sure that even if people came up to you and be like, "Hey, like you're extra funny right now. Are you stressed about something?" Straight face. No, I'm good. Oh, yeah, I was just trying to be if, funny. Now, now that I've said that, <laughs> yeah. you're, you're going to come up to me some, Every someday time. and you're going to be like, dude, you're like too funny after you get off the floor from right. laughing, yeah. not tooting my own horn. Right. You're going to come up to me and you're going to be like, dude, wh- why are you stressed? I'm like, me? No. No, I'm not stressed. I'm be like Beetlejuice. Uh-huh. Nothing. All right, me? come up. We're going to get prayer right now. <laughs> <laughs> Which is funny because back to that fellowship and communion yeah. thing is, you know, I've... I've been in the church a long time. Yeah. And I think, other than my wife, I think you're the only person, and maybe my, and I think my parents have done it once before, yeah. but I think you're the only person outside of my immediate family yeah. that's come up to me on a Sunday and said, you don't ask. You don't say, hey, yeah. you want to go up and get some prayer? I literally just grabbed his He's arm and I was like, we're going. <laughs> walked out into the other room at the church and said, we're going to get prayer for you. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> Being up with people at church, that doesn't bother me because right. I've done it enough. Yeah. But it's just that showing of the... Because yeah. we're in that mind of if we're getting prayer, something has to be wrong. Yeah. Yeah, that's definitely true. You think... But prayer is a good thing. It's our communion, right? And when we come together, that's like being in a full-blown conversation, the three of us. Yeah. And me, you, and God, yeah. right? And that's just us talking and yeah. saying... Like, like I, I, I laugh because I, I make my fiance laugh all the time about this because we'll pray and I'll be like, sup God, mm-hmm. how you doing? Right? Like, yeah. right. Like I'll just talk normally or talk extra like humorously about in, like in my relationship, you know, with God when, when, when I pray because I, it's God. Like, mm-hmm. I, I know that sounds weird, but like, I, He's my dad. He's my, you know, he's my father, right? And and he's my God. And so it's like, why wouldn't I just go to him normally? Why does it got to be this extravagant prayer? It's not. Yeah. Like, like I, I can't remember if it's in scripture or if someone, like C.S. Lewis said it or something like that, but they said, like, those who pray extravagantly, there's, like, so much, like, fakeness behind that yeah. because it's a show, right? It's kind of like, it's kind of like the guy who, like, uh, you, oh, the rich person who gave like somebody all the something money. about the lofty prayers. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Where where it's like when you pray and the, like it's unfruitful. There's yes. no fruit to it. There's there's nothing. It's it's substanceless. Yes. And but when we come to God, you know, kind of like the I think it was like the the poor widow who gave like her one like penny, yep. right? All she owned. That that has so much humility that when we go to God. That it's not just like, right? I don't want to go to God and be like, oh, God, you are the greatest and I love you so much, right? And like you're just loud and obnoxious, right? Now, I'm naturally loud, but like when you come to God with just this humility and you're like, God, I'm nothing. I am nothing without you. And I'm stressed beyond the max and I don't know what to do. I did that the other day where I was like, God, I don't even know what to do. Like, like I think I was stressed about like something that like in like like one of my like it was either like with my fiance or like family member or something like that. But I was just like I don't even know what to do. I feel like I feel like like my natural reaction is to fix it or you know I I'm just frustrated with them because I feel like I know the solution but they're not listening right yeah. right and you get frustrated about that. But when you come to God with humility and it's just like Lord I I got no solution and so. All right, I'm going to sit here until you tell me something because yeah. I don't know the answer, right? And you know what, Lord, I got to go do something. So, you know, if I'll, I'll be back. I'm a bounce. Right? right? I, I'm a bounce. Like, like even, even if you do that, and I know we're wrapping up, but like, even if you do that, even if you go to God and you sit there and you don't hear his voice, be vocal and, and like just express, God, 
I know you're going to speak to me. I'm going to come back. I know that I got to go and do life right now. I'm going to try and remember to pray and just talk to you throughout the day, but I'm going to come back and and we're going to keep talking and I'm going to keep listening for your voice. And I think that's what the whole praying without ceasing means is like, yeah, you have to go and live your day, but you come back to God and you focus on him. One little tidbit on that too is keeping your eyes open because the answer to that prayer may yeah. not come as you think. Exactly. Yeah. So, but yeah, this was this was a good episode. I, I say it's it, a good topic. It, it it's it's a good topic and like I said earlier, we can always revisit it. It's it's not something that you will really want yeah. to sit down and talk about because it's so common and you can take it yeah. so many different directions like yeah. we rabbit trailed probably a eight million times, times in here <laughs> because it's so easy to do with that topic yeah um but we have another episode here that's over an hour and it seems to be me and you always get the hour yeah. plus episodes but so we're gonna wrap it's it a up. treat it's a treat it is for everyone it's a, it's a treat um and if you guys listen to this on three different occasions because you have to to get through it hey that's fine yeah you know, we had to, we had to, did it in two Kind of t- like how you pray with God. If that's it's right. Three different occasions. You just got to come back occasions. to it, you know? Um, so you got anything else or? I, I've got plenty. I've I'll, got plenty You're telling too, me to but, be done though. <laughs> that's right. We got to wrap it up because I got a wedding I got to get to this afternoon. And so. I get to go look at a house. Uh, yay. Yeah. Sounds good. All but, righty. Hey, thanks guys yeah. for, for listening once again and watching. <laughs> Hi. So. Uh, We'll catch you next time. This is the Lasting Hope podcast with James and Joshua in the cave. In the cave. It's nice you guys can actually see the cave. Yeah. You get to see all my... Well, half of it. Half of it, yeah. (laughs) I won't show you the whole thing because the other half's a mess. But not really. No. All right. (laughs) We're going to get out of here. See you guys. See you guys. (laughs) 